Hey, this is Jordan from Jersey, and this is what I thought of the comics I read the weeks of November 18th and 25th, 2009. And yes, I know, I'm really late. This is the latest I've ever been uh, over a week, so I apologize. Um, a lot of reasons for that. The first one would be all these books last two weeks. Uh, last week was the probably the most I've spent on comics in one week in uh, a year, at least. That was It was a lot of money. Um and this week was quite a bit of books as well. So let's start things off with three Realm of Kings comics. I'm going to start off with Realm of Kings, the one-shot, um, which has... I pointed this out when it was an ad and I think, a Spider-Man issue a while back. But uh, I don't think this is a really nifty cover. The evil Avengers in it are <laughs> awesome. This issue is awesome. Um, the Fault kind of ripped open time and space at the end of... Uh, well, it didn't rip up in time and space. It is the rip in time and space. Uh, from the end of War of Kings, crazy monsters that we'll get to later have been coming through, and it's all around bad things. So Quasar, apparently, been reborn as pure energy. I don't know how that works. It's a comic book. Who cares? Anyway, everyone decides they're going to send Quasar because he's energy, and apparently that means he can't die, or at the very worst, he's already been dead, so he doesn't care. They're going to send him through the fault to find out what the heck is on the other side. Turns out, it's essentially the H.P. Lovecraft version of the Marvel Universe. Um, everything is just a little bit more Cthulhu than usual, uh, which is fine by me. And, you know, if you're reading Dark Avengers, Dark Reign, and you kind of wonder what a Dark Reign version of uh, the Ultimate Universe might look like, this is uh, kind of like that, because uh, as you can see there, Captain America, he's got the shield-shaped shield. -shape shield. Uh, their Iron Man, who is he on the cover? He is. He looks different on the cover than he does in the book, though. He looks like the ultimate Iron Man. It's really not that important what they look like. But uh, he go Quasar goes to the other side, meets these kind of crazy versions of the Avengers. Um, the Hulk is Cthulhu-ish, and he meets an interesting end. All kind of cool, and the ending's pretty awesome. All in all, it's a great one-shot. Pick it up. But what if you want political intrigue? In your Realm of Kings. Well, then you're going to want to pick up Realm of Kings and Humans. Issue number one of five, probably? Yep, one of five. Uh, this, exactly what it sounds like. It is the it is the political intrigue side of Realm of Kings. It's the Inhumans, you know, kind of assimilating themselves into Cree culture. Uh, Blastar, who, you know, kind of thought he was going to show up in the actual War of Kings. Apparently not. He's, uh, he's going to be the main... I don't know if he's going to be the main bad guy during Realm of Kings, but he's certainly going to be a player. Uh, some uh, squirm squirmishes, skirmishes, some skirmishes between uh, their factions. It's all very cool stuff. And our final Realm of Kings issue this week is Guardians of the Galaxy, issue 20. Another cool cover. Got kind of the new team there. Um, last issue of Guardians of the Galaxy. Everybody died. Not everybody, granted. It was like half the team, but like half the team died. So... Status quo is uh, moving right along, and all kinds of crazy stuff happens. Well, not all kinds of crazy stuff. There's a, a schmidgen of crazy stuff that goes on uh, in this issue. Very cool. Check it out. If, you, if you've been reading the series, you already know. It's a great read. Um, Moonstone's new costume is, uh, gets a thumbs up from me. That's all I'll say to that one. And uh, check it out. Realm of Kings seems to be shaping up pretty well. Now, before we get to the actual Dark Reign stuff, I have uh, another Marvel issue that kind of doesn't fit in Realm of Kings or Dark Reign. So, we are Ender Shadow, Command School, issue three of five. Come on, Ender's Game, Ender Shadow, you should be picking these up. I've said it so many times, but uh, I love the art in both of these books. The, the other one is very, a lot of neon colors, very bright, very dynamic. And this one gets a very different feel across, even though it's going over a lot of the, the same material. It's much more muted colors. So I like the layout in there. Um, just a lot of cool stuff that they do with the art. It's kind of got a, I don't want to say a classic feel, but it, it's something about it really just kind of reaches out and grabs you and kind of like, oh, that's cool. Uh, series as, as normal. It's very good, so pick it up. Next up, we have Deadpool, Merc with the Mouth, issue number five. Do you like Bob, Adrian of Hydra, uh, from Cable and Deadpool and some other Deadpool stuff? Then you are going to love Bill, Agent 
of AIM, or AIM, I don't know how it's technically supposed to be said, and I don't care. Um, kind of the same exact character, maybe? I don't know, we've just been introduced to him, so it'll be interesting where they take him. Do you like the British television show Spaced? Uh, kind of the precursor to Shaun of the Dead and Hot Fuzz. Same people did it. Well, if you remember the beginning of their second series, there was a scene about Jar Jar Binks. You're gonna like this issue. Um, Deadpool apparently shares Simon Pegg's feelings about Jar Jar Binks. I'll leave it at that. I still think the main Deadpool series is better than this, but it's still a fun read. Uh, so I still think you should be picking up Deadpool above this, but if you can afford both, check it out. And I'm not sure where I think Deadpool team up stacks up in there. We'll find out as more issues come out. Next up, we have Dark Avengers, number 11. I was going to go through my long boxes and pull out the cover this is based on. I think it's The Amazing Spider-Man 200. Uh, not 100% sure on that. There's also a Venom version, or a black costume version. Maybe issue 300. i very rusty with my numbers. Anyway, so it was cool to see this cover. Nice homage there. Uh, thumbs up for me. At the end of last issue, Molecule Man showed up, and a bunch of other really heavy hitters from the Marvel Universe. Spoilers, none of them were real, except for Molecule Man. Apparently, he's very lonely, and so he created uh, versions of the other, you know, majorly powerful, overpowered, crazy, godlike characters from the Marvel Universe. Not really that important, but in this issue, yeah, he kind of kicks the Dark Avengers to the curb over and over again. Does things like turn them to water, stuff like that. Because he can control molecules. That's why they call him, fun fact, Molecule Man. Anyway, we also get to learn some stuff about Victoria Hand and her past. Um, so nice, interesting stuff to know about the character because up to this point, I at least knew nothing about her except she has cool hair. She still has cool hair, but now I know more stuff about her. Next up, we have the always awesome Secret Warriors, number 10. With a nice... Focus on the gods in this issue. Um, to be completely honest, I love this series. I said that many times. I said it like 30 seconds ago. This issue confused me um, just a bit. I am not all that familiar with the uh, gods of the Marvel Universe. I know a little bit about Thor and that kind of stuff. Just a little bit. Um, I know even less about the Greek and Roman gods of the Marvel Universe. So I was a little bit scratching my head at certain points of this issue. I think they brought it together by the end pretty well. But there's certain things like, oh, you know, he killed him, but oh, he's alive in the next panel. And well, I'm not 100% sure what was going on in some of these places. Um, but by the end of it, it didn't really matter. Very cool issue. Can't wait to see what happens next issue. Um, this issue focused like almost exclusively on Phobos. I'd kind of like to see the rest of the team again. But hey, let's give him his own issue, see what's going on. Um, can't wait for issue 11. And we have two issues left, and I just noticed something very interesting about them that I had not picked up on um, before looking at them right now. Avengers the Initiative, issue 30, and Thunderbolts, issue 138. All right? Both good issues. But here's the interesting thing. I hadn't picked up on... It's a nightmare battle for Avengers the Initiative, and Scourge takes command of the Thunderbolts. I, I kind of like that. I kind of like integrating the the logo into a blurb it's much better in my opinion anyway than having you know a speech I, I hate when there's thought bubbles or speech bubbles on the front of the cover like oh no it can't be you or i'll never survive this it, that to me just reeks of the 60s and while there was lots of great stuff about comics back then come on i mean i, I hate when the star wars comics do it it just looks so stupid to me to me um but that I think that is a very cool way to work that in there. That that it's you know, it doesn't it doesn't stick out too bad or too much. I didn't even notice it till now. But I think it's kinda cool. Don't have a lot to say about Thunderbolts 138. Um solid issue. Got to see a little bit more of Ant Man in it than we might normally. So that was kinda nice. Um but yeah, solid issue altogether, just don't have a lot to say about it. And it's kind of the same thing with Avengers, uh, the initiative issue thirty. Really cool issue. Um they fight Nightmare who I don't know a whole lot about. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's moving the plot along very well. I'd just be repeating myself if I just mentioned how much you know, it's great to see these B-list characters get stories made about them and that are good. Pick it up. It's a good book. So that's it for part one of uh, this episode. Check back for part two, which will be Indies, and part three, which will be Spider-Man.